UK authorities have begun arresting citizens for social media posts about the current riots. Here's how Brits are calmly hearing about the arrests of their fellow citizens. We have some breaking news now, and a woman has been arrested by Cheshire Police in relation to an inaccurate uh, information on social media about the attacker in the Southport murders. It says a 55-year-old woman from near Chester was arrested earlier today, Thursday the 8th, of course, on suspicion of publishing written material to stir up racial hatred and false communications. She is currently being held in police custody. Um, a Chief Superintendent Alison Ross has also made a statement saying that uh, uh, this is in relation to uh, uh, a post which has been fueled by malicious and uh, the process rather has been fueled by malicious and inaccurate communications online. It is a stark reminder of the dangers of posting information on social media platforms without checking the accuracy. It's also a warning that we are all accountable for our actions. This is moving so quickly. We discussed the possibility of this just yesterday with Father Calvin Robinson and Matthew Marsden. And now there's a new report in return on Blaze Media's website about how the UK dug up a COVID era disinformation agency to crack down on citizens posting about the current riot. So here to discuss with us is Peter Giedel, managing editor for Return. And Peter, I mean, you've you've been over there. You know what is happening. So can you set up what the story is happening? Just every single moment that's it, the, all the twists and turns that are, keep going. Yeah, absolutely, Joel. Um, I mean, this story has me riled up. I used to live in London. Um, I really love England. I had an amazing time. I have a lot of friends there. I mean, basically what we're seeing is it didn't take long for the new Labour government to find an excuse to bring out draconian measures to crack down on dissent and free speech. I mean, it's common law. They don't actually have a First Amendment or free speech, unfortunately, there. And they dug up this misinformation board, and they're using it to go after people even just sharing video of riots or any mild dissent, especially around immigration. And where this is going is really concerning. And, and like you said, it's all happening very quickly. Yeah. And um, what's, what's disturbing about these images you're seeing on the screen, which, uh, you know, the government is putting out, it's Orwellian, right? And it, you keep saying that word over and over again every year now. And no, really, that's it. I mean, it's literally Orwell. It's here now. Um, but the, the post that I kept on staring at was just gov.uk, think before you post. And, and what we have to say is this is centuries of Anglo-Saxon... Uh, tradition uh, when it comes to what citizenship means. They brought that to the world and the idea of free political speech, and it's all just disappearing before our eyes. So zooming zooming out a little bit, Peter, uh, explain to us how we got here. Set the, set the scene. Well, we shouldn't forget, Matt, that uh, Winston Smith, uh, 1984, did take place in England. So yeah. there always has been this yeah. somewhat fascist streak a little bit that goes in, that they, they push censorship. I mean, I think it goes back precisely to 2016 when you had the Brexit vote, and it was the people of England expressing a desire that they weren't happy with the status quo of the rates of immigration that was coming into the country and changing the nature of what it meant to be English and changing their neighborhoods. And and yes, and there was a lot of crime and a lot of um, pressure that was put especially on the working class. And so you saw a switch where they, they voted in the conservative parties under Theresa May and Boris Johnson and Sinek, and nothing happened. N none of the immigration was brought under control. And unfortunately, you're seeing when, you know, you can't get things done at the ballot box, the frustration and anger is spilling out onto the streets. And it's providing a perfect case, a perfect excuse for them to crack down, which they've already kind of tentatively been doing for years. I mean, going back to Count Dankula with the man arrested for doing a joke with his dog. And it seems like they're really pushing this. Into Hold on, explain who Count Dankula is. <laughs> he, Some people may not know. He was a, uh, a Scottish YouTuber who yeah. made a silly joke with his pug about, uh, <laughs> and then he was put in prison for this. Mm. Um, and yeah, and they've, they've, they're now really accelerating. And I think that 
the apparatus has been built there, and it's getting built here in America too. But the, it, it was built, and it, and now they're really starting to implement it and go after and, and arrest just normal people for posting things online. Well, we can say here in the in America we have the First Amendment, but then we played a clip yesterday of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, who is now Kamala Harris's vice presidential pick, and he said there's no guarantee for free speech about misinformation or hate speech, especially around our democracy. We see it happening in the UK right now. How long is it until it makes its way over to, over the pond? <laughs> well, it's, it's moving fast. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, what do you think? Right now you see, like, how far behind would you say we are? As you said, they, they not only built their infrastructure, they're using it every day on their own citizens. What's scary about the riots is it's they've pushed the go button, clearly. Right. Um, but how, how far behind are we, do you think? Well, I mean, it seems it seems a lot of policies when it comes around these kind of globalization and these pushes towards censorship that England is like five years ahead of us. And then these things actually come instead of our culture getting exported to there, which it usually is a lot of these policies and dictates and ideas, uh, especially around censorship, g get push back to America. So I think it's right around the corner that they may start adopting, you know, especially if there's a different regime that takes over under under Harris, that they would start adopting some of these techniques and tactics. And I mean, unfortunately, the surveillance state has already been set up here and they just need an excuse to, as you say, turn it on. And it appears like they they're going full, full totalitarian, unfortunately. Mm -hmm.